Rocky Mountain National Park is one of the highest national parks in the USA. There are 60 mountain peaks over 12,000 feet, and many of these top out over 13,000 feet. Long's Peak, at 14,259 feet, is the only 14er in the park, but for serious hikers, getting to the top of this behemoth is one of the best things to do in Rocky Mountain National Park. Hiking is the main attraction at Rocky Mountain National Park, so make sure to come prepared with sturdy and comfortable shoes or boots to make the most of popular trails, such as Bear Lake and Emerald Lake Trail. To experience the park from the comfort and safety of your car, take the hour-long drive on Trail Ridge Road or the slightly more adventurous Old Fall River Road. But before you do anything, you should stop at one of the park's visitor centers, such as Beaver Meadows, to stock up on maps and information. And now let's find out the top 10 things to do in Rocky Mountain National Park. Also get some extra tips like, best time to visit, how to go, how much time do you need in the park, timed entry permits, and how to reserve a permit, where to stay, things to do marked map link and practical information. Number 1. Drive the scenic Trail Ridge Road. Trail Ridge Road is the highest paved through road, not only in Colorado, but also in the entire U.S. national park system. For 48 miles, this road runs from Estes Park in the east to Grand Lake in the west. 11 miles of this road is located in the Alpine Tundra, which is above the tree line. It reaches its highest point at 12,183 feet. Trail Ridge Road crosses the Continental Divide at Milner Pass. This is a gorgeous drive. Along the way, there is a good chance that you will spot bighorn sheep and elk. The views from the Forest Canyon overlooks are stunning, which showcases a jaw-dropping view of the glacier-carved valley below. The Alpine Visitor Center marks the halfway point and is a good place to stop if you need to stretch your legs or buy a snack. I would recommend setting aside at least half a day to traverse the road. The road, which is free to access with park admission, is open from roughly late May to mid-November. The rest of the year, it is buried under snow. For the most up-to-date information on the road's conditions on the National Park Service website. All the necessary links given below in the description. Number 2. Bear Lake. This is the shortest, most popular hike in Rocky Mountain National Park. Literally, it's a flat, beautiful, easy walk in the park. The entire hike is 0.6 miles long, making it great for all ages and ability levels. This trail is not paved, it's a gravel trail for most of its length, but it is considered handicap accessible. Not only is this a scenic walk around a lake, but this also can be a learning experience. For about $1 you can purchase the interpretive guide at the trailhead, which takes you through 30 marked spots along the trail that teaches you about the Bear Lake area. Number 3. Alberta Falls. Alberta Falls is one of the most popular waterfalls to visit in Rocky Mountain National Park. Like Bear Lake, it is an easy hike to get here. From the Glacier Gorge parking lot is a mostly uphill walk to get to Alberta Falls, but it is not too strenuous. Once at the waterfall, you can explore the short trails along Glacier Creek to find your favorite view of the waterfall. This hike is 1.7 miles round trip and takes 1 to 1.5 hours. Number 4. Go hiking. There is no better way to experience Rocky Mountain National Park than from a hiking trail. And there are many to choose from. With 355 miles of hiking trails, you could spend weeks here and never run out of things to do. From short, easy strolls around lakes, to ridgeline trails with panoramic views, to challenging but epic climbs to the tallest mountain peaks, there truly is something here for everyone. Here are some of the best trails in Rocky Mountain National Park. Alpine Ridge Trail, Gem Lake, Ute Trail to Tombstone Ridge, Nymph Dream and Emerald Lakes, Deer Mountain, Twin Sisters, Odessa Lake and Fern Lake, Sky Pond, Chasm Lake, Continental Divide Trail to Mount Ida, Hallett Peak, Longs Peak etc. Number 5. Moraine Park. Moraine Park is one of the best places in Rocky Mountain National Park to see wildlife. Herds of elk can be found grazing in this valley. Numerous hiking trails also start here, including those to Bear Lake, Fern Lake, and Mills Lake. 
Also here is Moraine Park Museum, which is housed in a converted log cabin built in the early 1900s. It's filled with exhibits on the natural environment of Rocky Mountain National Park, from its geology to its wildlife. It also features an outdoor amphitheater that hosts various talks and events. The museum's elevation of roughly 81,000 feet means it provides an unbeatable perch from which to take in the surrounding views. Number 6. Holsworth Historic Site. In 1917, John Holsworth and his family, immigrants from Germany, built a small cabin on this site. Over the following years, they built several more cabins which were used for guests. In 1974, the property was purchased by the Nature Conservancy and then became part of the National Park. Visitors to the park can tour the property to learn more about the life of Colorado homesteaders. During the summer months, volunteers offer daily tours of the Holsworth site. Number 7. Old Fall River Road and Chasm Falls. Opened in 1920, Old Fall River Road was the first road that led into Rocky Mountain National Park. This one-way, gravel road is 11 miles long, and it takes about one hour to drive it. It starts in Horseshoe Park and ends at the Alpine Visitor Center. This road has numerous switchbacks and there are no guardrails. However, there are plenty of pull-offs to allow vehicles to pass. You do not need a 4 x 4 standard vehicles will do fine on this road. Along the drive, stop at Chasm Falls. From the parking area, it's a very short walk to a viewpoint of this waterfall. Old Fall River Road is only open during the summer months. Get updates on road conditions on the National Park Service website. Number 8. Emerald Lake Trail. This popular 3.5-mile, round-trip hike winds past Nymph Lake, Dream Lake and Tyndall Creek and offers some breathtaking views of Long's Peak, Hallett Peak and Flattop Mountain before reaching the subalpine Emerald Lake at an elevation of 10,000 some feet. You can reach the Emerald Lake Trail from the Bear Lake Trailhead, found at the end of Bear Lake Road, about 9 miles from the turnoff at Highway 36. Make sure to take the trail that branches off to the left for the Emerald Lake Trail. The trail that veers to the right will take you to the Bear Lake Loop. Number 9. Oozle Falls. A popular spot during the summer, Oozle Falls is one of the most beautiful waterfalls in the National Park, with huge boulders and rushing water providing a hidden wonderland that is perfect for families or couples. Be soothed by the sound of thundering water streams and droplets into enormous boulders that break the quietness of the forest. There you could go on a picnic, continue on more challenging trails, go horseback riding, or even go camping, if you secured a permit. Number 10. Long's Peak. The only 14er in Rocky Mountain National Park, Long's Peak towers 14,259 feet above sea level and rewards adventurous visitors with stunning panoramic views of the wilderness. While the best views are at the peak, awe-inspiring vistas can be viewed for most of the climb. The arduous trek requires a significant amount of planning, as the 15-mile round-trip hike takes between 10 and 15 hours to complete. The most popular path to the peak is the Keyhole Route, which is divided into six distinct sections. The Keyhole Route is not a hike. The most difficult and subsequently dangerous aspect of the route is 1.5 miles between the Keyhole and the summit, which could be considered rock climbing. Now I would like to share some useful information which can help you during your RMNP tour. First is best time to visit the RMNP. If you want full access to the park, which includes driving Trail Ridge Road and Old Fall River Road, plan your visit for the summer and early fall, when these roads are typically open. The summer months are the busiest months to visit Rocky Mountain National Park, but with warm temperatures and great weather, this is also one of the best times to go hiking. Crowds can linger into autumn, as the leaves change color and pleasant weather continues to attract hikers. Once the snow arrives, usually by mid to late autumn, crowds begin to diminish. Temperatures are low in the winter, but so are the crowds. This is a great time to explore Rocky Mountain National Park crowd-free and try out snowshoeing. Second is how to get to the RMNP. During the busy summer months, a free shuttle service is provided by the National Park Service. 
These shuttle buses connect Moraine Park and Bear Lake, with numerous stops in between. The parking lots at some trailheads fill up early in the day, notably Bear Lake and Glacier Gorge, but you can still reach these trailheads by shuttle bus if you arrive late. Park at the park and ride, and take the Bear Lake shuttle to these two trailheads. Learn more on the National Park Service website. Third is how much time do you need an RMNP? Due to its large size and abundance of hiking trails, you need at least a few days to explore Rocky Mountain National Park. Ideally, plan on spending at least three days in Rocky Mountain National Park. If you are an avid hiker, I recommend spending at least five days in Rocky Mountain National Park. This gives you enough time to acclimate to the higher elevation before tackling some of the higher, tougher hikes such as Mount Ida, Hallett Peak, or Long's Peak. It's very important if you live at a low elevation. You can check out the 15 best hikes in RMNP. Video link is given below in description with all the necessary links. Fourth is timed entry permit. To visit Rocky Mountain National Park, you will need to reserve a permit in advance. This has been implemented to limit crowds at the busiest sections of the park during the peak visitation season in the summer months. If you do not have a reservation, you will not be allowed to enter the park. Reservations are made online. Each daily reservation costs $2 per vehicle, which is in addition to the $25 daily entrance fee or $35 weekly entrance fee per vehicle. Learn more on the official National Park Service website. Fifth is where to stay. If you want to stay in the park, you will be limited to campgrounds. There is no lodging inside Rocky Mountain National Park. Aspen Glen, Moraine Park, and Glacier Basin are the most popular campgrounds, and these get reserved well in advance. Long's Peak and Timber Creek campgrounds are easier to get reservations. But you can stay in a hotel in Estes Park. With numerous hotels and restaurants, and a great location near the heart of Rocky Mountain National Park, Estes Park is a great place to stay. Now a request to you, before you go there, please note this, while in Rocky Mountain National Park, please practice the seven principles of leave no trace, plan ahead, stay on the trails, pack out what you bring to the hiking trails, properly dispose of waste, leave areas as you found them, minimize campfire impacts, be considerate of other hikers, and do not approach or feed wildlife. So, make a plan, take preparation and go for the adventure in Rocky Mountain National Park. And don't forget to comment your opinion about this video. I love to hear from you. Thanks for watching so far.